Can't get enough of Kelly and Rumya? We're now on YouTube for you to indulge in highlights from our show. I'm Christine Malik, and this is Curious Minds, our dive into arts, culture, and science from a blindness perspective. You know, Chris, I just love that this was a subject that uh, when I looked at it, oh, this is what we're talking about today. It takes us back, to, well, me back, to our farming chat and, and when did kind of that stuff start. You want to talk today about when irrigation systems started. And this is fantastic. And I think Fedora's off to you for these things coming up that, because this is just so surprising and out of, out of like, wow. Every time I get my notes together, I think you should probably just start with, Chris, why are we talking about this? <laughs> oh, but, but so, it's so awesome. I just love more so, where the heck do you get this eye? Did this where one's the cool. Do these I come love from? it. Yeah, yeah, so you're right. This really does connect to um, a, a segment I did a few months ago on the agricultural revolution. And I got the chance recently to hear a presentation about ancient civilizations and how they used resources. And of course, water is fundamental. It's one of the mm -hmm. most important uh, resources that we have. And at the agricultural revolution, kind of as it got going, people started to figure out that if you can move water around, um, you can greatly increase the amount of land that is productive. So you don't have to be farming just by the river. You can move that around. And um, so we start to see early irrigation systems around 3,000 BCE, so 5,000 years ago in Mesopotamia, which is sort of Iraq-Iran region, and Egypt. And it what these systems were trying to do was to take water, move it around, make more arable land. And um, this accomplished a lot of things. As people could farm more land and grow more food, they stayed in one place. And this has huge implications for what happens. You can start specializing. You can develop a stratified society, basically what we refer to as civilization, which is the whole construct of how people live Um becomes possible when you can stay in one place and focus on on specific specific things okay so when we want to isolate wh where this kind of started can we get a little more zeroed in on where did people start when it came to making this land a little more productive uh, so Iran and Iraq is the Tigris and the Euphrates River in the Fertile Crescent, and also then the Nile as well in Egypt. And so one of the things that uh, Egypt developed was called the Shaduf, and it's also known in Mesopotamia as well, in India and in Eastern Europe. And I have a photo. We're going to show it, and we're going to listen to a an AI description of the photo. So let's do that first. First, and then we'll we'll talk about what it is. So let's check out the photo in the description. The image depicts an ancient irrigation tool called a shadow, used for watering the lands. It consists of a long, tapering wooden beam balanced on an upright support, with a bucket or scoop at one end and a counterweight at the other. A man is shown operating the shadow, standing on a raised mound of earth. He is using his body weight to push down on the end of the beam with the counterweight, which raises the bucket end out of the water source. The surrounding area is not detailed, but there are some sketchy lines indicating the ground and a few tufts of grass. The caption reads, Shadow for Water in the Lands. Thebes. It's so the thing is, when we start... When we start talking about irrigation systems, there's kind of this tacit idea in the sighted world that everyone's seen these kind of diagrams and mm. these illustrations and they know what, and to me, I just, in this presentation, I went irrigation systems. I don't really get how this works. So my, I hope I'm going to get this right, but what I think's going on is it's using this sort of fulcrum or teeter-totter kind of um, model and it dips a bucket into a, a stationary water source like a river, like the Nile, the bucket gets full. It can lift as high as six meters above by counterweighting the other end, which may be, you know, a significant distance from the river. And then, if I understand it correctly, it's going to slide down and then pivot. And so, if you can just spin that whole thing around, what you end up with is a big bucket of water quite a distance from the stationary water source. And this allows you to just sort of dump it all into uh, what might have been an unproductive field. Uh, 
and then you get uh, you get water where you didn't have water before, and you get arable land also where you didn't have water before. So the sh- that's called the shaduf, which was uh, yeah. developed, we believe, in Egypt, Mesopotamia, but also used in Western Europe. And I guess where that water lands, of course, it's going to splash. It's going and rooting roots will find that water, it, but it gets it closer to them trying to get to the river into an area that makes that land more more suitable. I, I yeah, I was wondering about the movement. How much movement? Because otherwise, you think what? Does it just lift and then it, it's got to have that swivel and be able to be moved to another area too? You think or another one built? So fantastic, Chris. Especially you think about how someone decided, well, we're going to do this, and this will help us do that, instead of me going down to the river, bucket fill, walking right. 100 you yeah. know, feet <laughs> over somewhere else. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is it's... why I love irrigation. Sorry, this is why I love irrigation as an idea because it's human ingenuity at its at its best. It's people yeah. thinking and using intelligence and observation and experiment to try things and come up with a solution that works. Levers and weights. No, it is. Awesome. It is. And it's it's so fascinating to hear you describe this because I you don't necessarily admit this all the time, but especially if you're born blind, uh it is so difficult to comprehend these systems and so hard to just figure out who is going to spend the mental energy describing, you know, photo right. after photo for me. So finally, AI is putting this a little bit in reach, which is fantastic. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, we do have another system that you're going to describe for us. We do. It's called the Kanat, and this is something that was developed in uh, Persia, so also Iran, the Iran you know, area of the world. Um, It's, you have vertical well shafts, which are for maintenance, but what they are is basically a set of underground pipes. And so again, I have a photo and some AI description. So why don't we give that a look and a listen and then I'll I'll elaborate a bit on that. The image shows an ancient irrigation system known as a canad or phalage, which is used to transport water from an underground aquifer to the surface for agriculture and drinking. It features a series of well-like vertical shafts connected by gently sloping tunnels. In the foreground, there is a cascading flow of water over a stepped, terracotta-colored structure that resembles a large comb with water flowing evenly from each tooth, creating multiple small waterfalls. This structure is distributing water into several parallel channels that are lined with green grass, indicating the presence of water and its life-sustaining role in an otherwise arid landscape. The background is dominated by a desert environment with sandy ground and sparse vegetation, including a few palm trees that suggest an oasis setting. The sky is overcast, giving the scene a soft, diffused light. And so in this Very one, cool. it's showing the water above ground, but in, in many of the systems, what's going to happen is it goes underground and it's using gravity. So you're going to start from a, a more elevated position, uh, you know, geographically, use gravity, dig um channels or canals that go under the ground. And the av- av- advantage of this, of course, is that uh, you minimize contamination, evaporation, or <clears throat> destruction in war. So your water supply uh, your water supply is safe. And it's it's so true what you said about how we, we it's sort of awkward to admit that we don't always understand these things. Because in this presentation, I was asking about, you know, these these details. And he said, well, there's a levee. And then I said, mm, okay, actually, what, I don't know what a levy yeah. is. And, he, and then he kind of, it was a sighted guy, and he's a great guy, but just sort of off the cuff with that thing. He's like, well, don't you know that song and the levy, the levy is dry? And I'm like, okay, yeah, but that doesn't give me yeah. any. So there's all of these culture gaps, right, that we have. And um, I love AI. I love AI yeah, and for this. Just, yeah. just those things where you're embarrassed to just keep asking and keep asking for more <laughs> descriptions awkward. and now with ai you yeah. can ask it whatever the heck you want right? i'll talk to you all day I and know. it doesn't laugh at you what do you mean right? asking that to and the it levy. doesn't go Come what do you on. mean don't you know that song the levee is dry <laughs> okay that doesn't help me though <laughs> yeah <laughs> and we've more. talked about that with wind farms right because how recent have you climbed up that let's see what this thing does right? which way does it go vertically or horizontally uh-huh, you have uh-huh. another one for us okay because it's known all over the world irrigation um what about the example you have from asia i, I find this fascinating especially even mm-hmm. the littlest detail in the last one of the grass of course is green goes underground. Why? Well, the whole description of the area is dry desert, so you don't want that evaporation you mentioned. So I love this. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's so interesting. So the third example is from China, and it's a sluice arrangement. So a sluice is um, any 
movable gate that allows you to control the flow of water. So let's give a listen to this. This is describing the uh, a sluice gate arrangement to irrigate rice fields in China. The image depicts a traditional sluice gate, part of an irrigation system used for rice fields in China. The rusty metal structure serves as a control mechanism to regulate water flow through the narrow channel beneath it. The channel stone walls appear aged, indicating long-term use in the agricultural practice. The sluice gate connects two sides of the channel, allowing for the precise management of water levels necessary for rice cultivation. The surrounding stonework and the still water in the channel suggest a tranquil, rural setting, typical for rice growing areas. In the background, there is a larger body of water that likely serves as the source for the irrigation system, with lush greenery indicative of a fertile landscape. So I'm I'm super interested in the movement of water in general. And this one to me, again, like I'm just going by what I read and the, the AI description. So there may be people who know more about this and are thinking, no, Chris, you got it all wrong. But I what I think is that it's working like a lock system with boats where you control yeah. the flow of water. You let one part fill up, you let one part go lower. And it's basically doing the same thing as a lock system does. And it's uh, spilling, right? I think it spills over to yes. give that because of the key here is rice fields need a little more water, standing water. And and I think that level of spill, I, I find it so, I didn't like the beginning, <laughs> rusty gate. Like what? <laughs> rusty doesn't, it? like that water is, you know, scary. it's kind of a, oh, okay. But I but we are talking standing water anyway, that, that mm -hmm. for the rice is what it thrives in. Yeah. Yeah, and rust isn't necessarily bad for plants. No, we don't want no, to drink it, exactly. But, um, yeah, yeah, and it's showing these systems, you know, they get used, they're getting used. You, you, you mentioned uh, whenever you come on, we talk about super fascinating stuff. And I know you mentioned this was re this is really interesting to you in particular. What makes it interesting to you? I think because it's it's showing human ingenuity at its best. It's what made it possible to feed more people. And arguably, as as I've sort of discussed before, the, the agricultural revolution is a bit controversial. Was it a great plan? Mm, you know... Yes, no, yes, no. But to me, uh, irrigation is sort of humans at their at their best, using gravity, using mm -hmm. the natural forces. And um, of course, with all as with all things that enjoy you know human ingenuity, it can lead to bad places too. So many parts of the world got over salinate, like over irrigation can lead to too much salinization, too much minerals left to evaporate into the soil, then the soil becomes unusable. So there's a whole, you know, is, is it a great idea? Yes, when it's used correctly. But to me, it's the human ingenuity, it's the resourcefulness, it's observation and analysis, figuring out how to use what you have to make things, uh, you know, to make things better. And, um, that's I, I I'm really curious about aqueducts to the Roman yes, aqueduct yes. system. Oh, civilization yes. is one of the definitions of civilization is a, it's measured as the distance between a person and their waste. And so when you think of that through, it's true. How far are we away from our sewage treatment plants? That's how we define whether we live in a good civilized uh, mm. functioning society. So uh, still really relevant today. Well, I, and for me, like, as you said, it's the age. It's when people were thinking these things and allowing us to realize, yeah, maybe the thinking had to be different. The technology, what they had tools to use was so different, but they arrived at so many of the same conclusions we did. We need water. We need it to survive. Right. How are we going to move it from here to here? How are we going to get rid of, rid of our waste? When are we going to collect our garbage? All these things that, you know, we, we take for granted. And at some point, they were able to because someone created a method to do it. Wonderful, yeah. Chris, as usual. Thank you. Thanks for watching. You can catch Kelly and Rumya weekdays from 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern on AMI.